Welcome to our first edition of Project CB podcast. I am Carlette and with me I've got my dear friend um, Noreen. And today we are going to discuss what is your vision. But most of all, how do you think about your vision for 2020? Hey, how do I think about my vision for 2020? Noreen, how do you think? What is your vision for 2020? My vision in general is for healing and restoration because everybody talks about how rough 2019 was for them and I was just thinking to myself on the way here tonight in my personal life what do I want spiritually and I think what I want is what a lot of people also need just he- for God to open a path for you so that next year this time when you think back you can think about God restored me in this and this and this way and he healed that situation and that situation and that situation and I think if you have a vision it's something that you speak out prophetically you affirm that that is what's going to happen so that's what I'm affirming over my life and for the world is for restoration. Healing and restoration. Mm. So that's Nareen's vision. My vision for, for 2020 is to see my business grow, double what I've done last year. And um, I want to become a household brand name. Although it has been prophesied already, um, I'm I want to become a household brand name that would be Mm. respected right across the board of and the world okay so it takes time but it's also what you think so if I think and if you think that it you can't do it Mm. then it will happen that way but if I'm thinking positively and say okay I want to become a household brand name. It has been prophesied over my life. Therefore, I have faith because God said so. And therefore, it shall be so if I affirm it over and over and over. I will become a household brand name and be respected all over the world. For you, it's healing and restoration. So if you say and think, you will be healed. It will be like that. Okay, so I've got with me a light bulb. <laughs> and if I can describe this light bulb, it, it worked once upon a time. And um, what actually happened, and this is the analogy that I was reminded of about thinking positive and let positive things come into your life opposed to the negative so what happened with this light bulb I mean you haven't seen this it literally blew so there's one part that's missing and the coils and whatever it's not working anymore I mean come on it's hectic so actually what happened as I was lying in bed and it's mozzie season so there was these mozzies zooming all around and I took the, the doom and I sprayed and by accident I sprayed it onto this glow and it popped now it reminds me of that sometimes you can be an effective person you can glow as much as you can but if there's poison in your life coming in over a period of time it will break you at the end and this is quite a nice analogy so what you put into your life can make or break you Mm -hmm. so it reminds me of a scripture this scripture comes out of, there's so many scriptures actually, but Proverbs 23 verse 7 that says that what you think, you will become. So what do 
you think about yourself and with your vision. What I think about myself, <clears throat> well, I've been in a, a season, if you want to call it that, of some introspection and like personal growth for the past few months while I've been on holiday. And that's a really good question. So, how I envision myself now is that I'm a person who I could say yes to a lot more things so that I can be, like self-actualize or become that person I envision myself to be. But if I think about who I am right now, I am a, a well-loved, caring person who can inspire people in little ways. And how that connects with my vision is I believe God has already restored me and because that is my attitude, that's something I affirm of myself, that is my vision, I can also spread it to people around me on a small scale or on a bigger scale, depending on how it goes. But um, I think you can do a lot, but you can't do everything by yourself. So, it's like that lady was talking about how her vision of becoming or establishing her own brand. You kind of have to say yes to a lot of things that you might think, why am I doing this? This is crazy. But it's so inspirational if you turn away from the, your fears and the things that keep you back in life and you just say yes. If someone asks you, you'll take them to the airport, just say yes. If someone asks you, you're gonna go bungee jumping, just say yes. If someone asks you if you can offer an extra lesson or volunteer at church, just say yes. It's important. So you've said about the, the fact that you can just say yes. Yes. In the sense of maybe you fear going to the to the airport and you want to overcome that fear of this rush of people and crazy here and there and the roads, you know, it's it's hectic at the airport. Yeah. But you know 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says we should not fear because fear actually is not a real thing. It's not reality. It's just a feeling. Mm. But it's not real. So fear is not real. But you said something nice, um, that what's the opposite of, of fear? I think it's love. Because love can grow and fear cannot come from love. Because God is love. Mm. I, I, I will agree with you that the opposite of fear is love. Because where there's love, it's actually everything. It conquers literally everything. But now, thinking of um, affirmations as well. So, have you ever had that thing of, um, I can't do this, going to the airport. I can't, I can't do mm -hmm. people. How many times have we said that? They're, those negative thoughts. Strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So that's a taking that fear and make it in a positive way so um, what if have you ever had uh, we've, we've spoken about the um, varsity university and yeah. that fear of passing or not passing are you going to graduate aren't you gonna graduate so if you tell in your mind that for that entire year that I'm not going to graduate what would be your reality what will happen at the end You'll probably fail. So because the moment there's a bump, you you have to be able to say this bump does not align with my vision, mm -hmm. and I have faith that the right resources will be given to me to get through it and succeed. So it's quite yeah. easy. Just just take what is negative and let it be positive. So if you heard this, this is Chloe. Mm -hmm. Our Dutch aunt, it's all 
also wants to say something, but she will probably just end up drinking our coffee. Or eat your pen. <laughs> or eat my pen or something. But um, <laughs> so that's just added on. Speaking of negative affirmation mm -hmm. in your vision. If you say, I will not become a household brand name, or I fear of all the risk that needs to be taken for, to become a household brand name, or um, I fear, uh, or I can't do it. Mm. And maybe you are saying because you want to have that restoration and healing. Mm. What if your mindset is geared in this way saying, my vision, I want this. I'm trusting the Lord for mm. this. But in your mindset, hindsight, you say, it's not going to happen. Or, like, in my personal situation, it's sometimes things that you have to confront people about. Maybe like family members, and you have a fear of confronting them, and that can stop you from accomplishing your vision. Actually doing mm. something about it. So, what if... You can take all of this negative affirmation and turn it around and make it positive, real. Mm. Because it, it's going to manifest whether it's negative or positive. It's, it, mm. it has to manifest because they yeah. do say you attract what you... And you, the Bible says, where's that scripture? Um, Proverbs 23 verse 7, that says what you think you will, will become. So what what you think you will be. So if I think I'm not good enough, mm. it's gonna manifest some way or another. Mm. So what if we turn it around and say you are good enough. I am loved. I am resourceful. Mm -hmm. I will pass my exams. I will become a household brand name. I am blessed. I will receive my, or I am going to receive my healing and restoration. Mm -hmm. It needs to manifest some way or another. Mm -hmm. So, what would you? Take what was a negative thought that you will now turn around and think positive about? Uh, well, if I think, if I can just link it back to my own mm. fear, the one thing I fear the most, and it sounds really silly to some people, <laughs> or you like extroverted people out there as well, is that my fear is meeting new people. So for this year, Right before I start new classes and a new like qualification and everything this year, my mindset about meeting new people in class, just on that level, has changed from nobody's going to like me, I'm so insecure about meeting new people, to mm -hmm. being like, even if I get rejected, if I go up to every person who sits in my class at some point during the semester, I'm relatively sure there might be like 10% who like hardcore reject me, <laughs> but then the other 90% will be like, hey friend. The, the odds that, yeah. that you will have more friends than enemies will be far better than... So my philosophy about how I would approach that is, just dive in head first. If you think, if you want to affirm something over yourself, you have to kind of just put yourself in a situation and say, this is how it's going to be. And then keep trying until it happens. So I'm thinking about that 10% that is going to reject you now. I mean, rejection is a, it's real. I mean, there, there's people out there, maybe you um, listening, might feel rejected so how would you turn that rejection around just say that 
it's their loss. Yeah, if they reject they're... me, it's their loss. They are going to lose a great friendship. Show people what they're missing out on. <laughs> an awesome friend. <laughs> so it's it's on them. It's not on mm. you. Yes. So um, thinking about um, Philippians four verse eight, <laughs> that says we need to renew our mind. Yes. And that, that is exactly with the positive affirmations. You can rewire your brain, um, according to Dr. Caroline Eve, you can mm -hmm. rewire your brain so that you can be more healthy, be more you at the end. Yes. Um, so Philippians 4 verse 8, renew and rewire your thinking patterns so if, or, or your mind. Um, so you can go and read Philippians 4 verse 8. Um, I'm just summarizing it in my own words. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end, it is that rewiring your negative thoughts to positive thinking, which you will mm -hmm. become healthier at. I have a story. Please share the story. It's not my story, but it's of this. I found this guy on YouTube and his name is Wim Hof. Now this guy climbs mountains like in like the most icy cold areas in like a pair of shorts. Oh right. So I went and looked him up in his training and his whole philosophy and everything. And what he basically came across because they also put him in some like medical trials and tests mm. to check how the heck does this guy survive? <laughs> yeah. Like people die from frostbite and like hypothermia. And he's doing it in shorts. <laughs> yes. Goodness. So basically what this guy has like set out to do if you say to retrain your mind mm. is he uses cold exposure therapy. So he'll sit like in ice baths and stuff in like negative temperatures and try to increase the time like from two minutes, four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes to see how he can counteract that fear instinct that kicks in to say, I need to survive. Well, I'm going to die so, when, when so, it's minus 10 or something. So basically what he's taught himself to do is when his brain says, you need to survive, you need to get out of here. He tells his brain, I am surviving. I can, I you can know. do this. Yeah. And he calms himself down. And basically what's happened to his body physically is his immune system has adapted. So his antibodies physically increased mm. so that he can survive in colder temperatures. Oh, wow. And that's how he sets those records. Just by rewiring. <laughs> his thoughts. So imagine this, they do say the, the scientists, the, the clever people, which we are because now we are training ourselves to be geniuses, <laughs> okay, but, um, they do say that when you want to give up your brain capacity or, or it's like 40 percent. So when you, let's say we, you are running or climbing those mountains and you're exhausted, it's only 40%. There's still 60% that you haven't even delved into. Now imagine that guy <laughs> brain capacity to to mm. just say, okay, I'm gonna do this. Mm. He, I, I personally think he increased um, his survival and everything so that it's it's like 60-40. Yeah. It's, it's not scientific, I'm just he also Didn't mentions it. that you only tap into 40% of all your, your capacity. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine if you can't, if you say, I can't anymore, that's it. Then your capacity is zero. Then you can still, have, you've got yeah. 60% to go. So actually, you will be fine. Probably. You will survive. Yes. You will survive this. Now, um, yo, it's, it's quite amazing that science and the Bible um, actually meet. The Lord has these awesome revelations in the Bible and that people wrote it down for us as Christians to, 
actually read it and then science comes in they affirm it they say yes it is so so the scientists and the scripture have in common because they just say whatever the scientists research and did these hectic research um, experiments it's already been written down way long ago for us renew your mind and you will survive um, positive affirmations and you will succeed but it reminds me of um, the fact that um, you sometimes have these negative thoughts you've you've got that that things aren't going your way just yet mm. but it will happen you just need to carry on affirming God loves me because he does and you just need to believe it um, you have to say each and every day I am blessed I am favored get those positive affirmations going and you will see at the end mm -hmm. how it manifests yeah. I think a lot of the things that get people down are wounds that they have to you know, just bring it back to my vision as well so when you think about say something bad happened to you mm -hmm. as a child and now as an adult you get into situations and what happened to you back then causes a hurt inside of you and sometimes it's so like out of proportion for your context as an mm -hmm. adult but it just takes you back to that vulnerable place if you think about applying this way of thinking like what the word says to you in your mind and to give up mm -hmm. your your hurt to god to heal yeah. how far you can go, really go in, in, in overcoming um, those yeah. sorts of things <laughs> In Romans, um, where is this now? Romans, it definitely says, renew your mind, mm -hmm. like solidly. And um, I think it's Romans 8. Um, but don't, I think it's Romans 8. Um, but in any case, I will come to that scripture in a moment. I so love what Philippians 4, and I've said it the previous or, or mm. earlier but listen to this I, I have to read it to you and this is such a real scripture for me I love it this comes out of the Amplified um, Philippians 4 verse 8 it says for the rest brethren what is true whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely and lovable whatever is kind and uh, winsome and gracious if there is any virtue and excellence if there is anything worthy of praise think on and weigh and take account of these things fix your mind on them for me this is such an absolutely incredible scripture just fix your mind on what is positive yeah. is it an inspiration really for your life <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an inspiration I'm just searching for that that scripture in Romans 8 um, so but in any case um, just to to wrap it up for us mm -hmm. what do you think you will become negative or positive in your life at this current moment mm. what is your thought pattern is it negative or is it positive is it like that um, globe that you can just pop any moment because of all the negative poison that comes in and maybe you've, you've burned out and you can't mm. take anymore. Is that your reality? Mm. What does the word say? Fix what is being, hearing something. So what does the word say? Fix on what is good. good. 
And that's it. Yeah. For Project CB, so that's it from Project CB podcast. See you next time. Bye. Cheers. I'm <laughs> sorry.